Welcome to church, everyone. Who's been eating healthy this week? <laughs> hey? Yeah? Some of us? If you're joining us for the first time, we've been speaking about what? Spring cleaning. Spring cleaning. And um, last week we spoke about spring cleaning, especially what? Two things. What? Anyone know? Two F's. There were three F's, actually. Anyone remember? Our food and our fitness. Okay. Um, who's done well with their food this week? A few hands? Yes. Excellent. I did really well. Well, I thought I was doing really well. And then John Bowles invited me for dinner. And, um, man, it was just so much good food that I didn't want to be, you know, not polite, so I had to eat some of it. Um, and how about on your fitness? Who's done well in their fitness this week? Pretty good? Yes, yeah, some? Cool. Well, that's good. Um, this whole series is not about judgment, okay? Um, it's not to judge you. It's not to condemn you. But we're trying to look at some practical guidelines that God gives us in life and how we can just live life better, okay, and to the fullest. Now, um, today we're speaking about possessions, all right? And, um, man, I am always so encouraged when I see people sitting in the front row, and then Naomi there. But I'm, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna give all this chocolate to the front row this morning. Um, and yeah, you guys can just enjoy it. It is one of my favorite things to see when people sit in the front row. All right, so anyway, this week we're speaking about possessions. Now, um, to start off, I want you all to know that um, I hope I can walk off this stage today not being injured um, and no one sort of climbs into me. I just want to speak and share some principles, some guidelines that I think and that I hope um, will be beneficial for our lives. Um, we all have heaps of possessions. Some of us have a lot more possessions than other people, um, as we saw in this sort of um, this skit. Um, but sometimes our possessions actually get in the way of our relationship and our connection with God. And um, this whole spring cleaning series, the first week we looked at spring cleaning one, guys with me this morning? Our, what? our mind, okay, cool, our mind. And we looked at, hey, what, what were the action steps that we could actually do? There were three S's. We said we want to? Yeah, find a spot, okay? And then we want to do what at that spot? Spend, spend some time with God, all right? Read His Word, be encouraged, be transformed in our mind. And the last one is? Yeah. To share, all right? To share with others. And um, then last week I said, hey, jot down some of the, the future hopes and dreams that you have for your health. Um, and especially then, let's just pay a bit of attention to our food. Let's see what we're eating. Let's see if it's going to be helpful for our body. And also let's pay attention to our fitness. And today it's possessions, all right? So... To start off this morning, I want to quickly go through a few slides. Can we go to the next one? This is the question that I've been asking this whole series long, and it is, who do you want to become? Okay, who do you want to become? This whole spring cleaning um, series is about asking this question, who do you want to become? We're all going to become somebody. Um, every day we're making decisions that is changing us constantly, but we can be intentional about who we actually want to become. And um, that is by making wise choices and following some awesome guidelines that God has given us for our life, okay? Next thing is, um, if it doesn't feel, fuel, feed, all, fertilize, fruitfulness, forget it, okay? We just said, hey, if, if there's something that is sort of, you know, in your life and that it is not helpful, let's chuck it out, okay? Let's get rid of it. Let's spring clean. Let's not just sweep it under the carpet, but let's take it out of our life. And um, the whole thing is also that it's, it's progress, not perfection, all right? This series is not about 
Um, it's not legalistic, all right? It's not a way how we can get in good relationship with God. Um, he loves us as we are today. There's nothing we can work our way to improve on that relationship or, or, or change his mind, should I rather say. Um, but actually, this whole series is actually just about progress. It's trying to grow um, as we follow Jesus step by step. Right. So today, I want to share this crazy story with you. And the story is about a, a king. Who's ever heard of King Hezekiah? Mm -hmm. Some of us have, okay? Cool. Now, King Hezekiah was probably, if, if you want to put it, he was like, he was so devoted when it came to um, following God. He was committed um, at numerous times. He'd be seeking God um, for God's protection, for his guidance. Um, as he was leading his kingdom, he had constantly asked God, God, we need your help. Um, and at one stage, um, King Hezekiah, he, was, he, he got really ill to the point where he was... Um, he had probably been eating too much chocolate, okay, constantly. But he got really ill. Um, he was on his deathbed. And um, while he was on his deathbed, there was this prophet. And a prophet, for those who don't know, is just someone who, I guess, God used in the Old Testament to communicate a message um, that God wanted to communicate. And he used this prophet called Isaiah to communicate with Hezekiah. Um, while he was on his deathbed. And so this prophet Isaiah, he went to Hezekiah and he said to him, Hey, um, Hezekiah, I just want to inform you, I've got some news from God for you today. And this is what God says. He says, um, get your house in order, okay? Get ready for your death. Great news, eh? Do you like that news while you're lying in bed on your deathbed? From God, yeah, Isaiah comes and he shares. He says, hey, I want you to tell you this, that, that you're actually going to die, okay? You've only got a short time to live. And um, I just want to tell you to get your house in order. Get ready, all right, because your time is coming. So Hezekiah, as he hears this, he knows it's from God. And he is, he is like more than concerned, all right? He straight away falls down, and he pleads with God. And he says, God, you know my heart. You know how faithful I've been to you. You know all the time I seek you every single day. You have, you know, you've blessed me with so much. Why? Why do you want to take my life now? Please, God. And, and literally, he pours his whole heart out to God, saying, God, please, please, just give me more time. I want to live longer. The Bible shares that, that Hezekiah wept bitterly. He was crying. He was bawling his eyes out. And as Isaiah was leaving, as he was leaving, God communicates to Isaiah and he says, Hey, I want you to go back to Hezekiah and say, I've heard your prayer. And I'm actually going to give you some extra time. Crazy story, right? If, if, you, if you don't know the story, go and read it. It's found in 2 Kings chapter 20. So Isaiah goes, he returns and he goes to Hezekiah and he says, Hezekiah, I've got some good news. I'm sure Hezekiah's like, hey, I don't want to get any of the news anymore. All right. But he says, hey, as I was walking out, God communicated to me and he said, hey, he's going to give you some extra time. And he's going to give you uh, another, I think it was 15 years to live. And... Um, Hezekiah is like, how, how can I be sure of this? How can, I, how, how can I really be sure that I think it was in three days if he goes to the Lord's house, he's going to be given an extra 15 years to live. How can he be sure? How can he be guaranteed? So he said, hey, the sun, if it was to you know, be going down, there'd be a shadow that is cast. And would you think, would you want God to show you the shadow moving forward or backwards? And Hezekiah said, well, the shadow always moves forward. So if, if God moved the shadow back, then I would know for sure that God is actually going to give me an extra 15 years to live. And um, as they were speaking that, the shadow moved back. And Hezekiah was guaranteed, hey, I can trust in God. I know it's true. I've been spared. 
Crazy story, right? But quite a miracle. Um, I guess we don't, we, we don't really, or sometimes we do, we don't see these kinds of stories sometimes today. But this story is, is so significant, and especially in the spring cleaning series on possessions, because when I read it and when I thought about it, I thought, man, can you imagine how connected Hezekiah must have been to God after God had healed him? I mean, he's on his deathbed. He's, he's about to die. Isaiah even says to him, you're going to die soon. Imagine how connected Hezekiah must have been with God because he's being blessed. And now he's saying, hey, you know what? This is so cool. Thank you, God. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm going to live for you. These 15 years, I'm going to commit. I'm going to give my whole heart, everything, all my chocolate to you. I wish the story was like that, but this, this is how the story actually goes. I want to pick up the rest of the story. It's from verse 12, and this is what it says. It says, at that time, murder. I think it's Baladan, son of Baladan, king of Babylon, sent Hezekiah letters and a gift because he had heard of Hezekiah's illness. And these, these, this was the other king from Babylon. This is actually the opposition, the opposing kingdom, all right? They hear of this miracle. They hear, wow, Hezekiah, he was sure to die. Everyone thought he was going to die. He was on his deathbed. But they hear of this miracle and they send these gifts. They send these letters and all these men come um, to Hezekiah to witness this miracle. Next up, it says Hezekiah received the envoys and showed them all that was in his storehouses. The silver, the gold, the spices, and the fine olive oil, his armory, and everything found among his treasures. Isn't that cool? These messengers come to bring these letters and gifts to Hezekiah. And Hezekiah, straight away, he takes them on this grand tour. And he says, hey, I want you to just see all my gold. Check out my silver, all right? Check out this, this fine olive oil. Check my armory. Check all my treasures that I have here in my kingdom. There was nothing in his palace or in all his kingdom that Hezekiah did not show them. Then Isaiah the prophet went to King Hezekiah and asked, what did those men say? And, and where did they come from? Isaiah's like, hey man, who were all those guys? Who were all those guys who came here? And, and what did they want? What, what did you show them? He says, from a distant land, Hezekiah replied. They came from Babylon. These guys came from Babylon. They journeyed all the way from Babylon. The prophet asked, well, what did they see in your palace? And he responded and he said, they saw everything in my palace. Everything. Everything in my palace. There is nothing among my treasures that I did not show them. He goes on and he says, Then Isaiah said to Hezekiah, Hear the word of the Lord. The time will surely come when everything in your palace and all that your predecessors have stored up until this day will be carried off to Babylon. Nothing will be left, says the Lord. And I want you all to repeat after me, say nothing. Cool story, hey? Such a cool story. I thought, man, this is us all the time. Hezekiah, he receives this miraculous miracle from God. This crazy miracle from God. And I mean, you would think the first thing that he would do when these Chaldeans came to sort of, you know, visit him is he, he would actually share, hey, let me tell you about my God. Let me tell you the miracle that he has performed. But no, he shows all his possessions. He shows everything that he has. And he even says, he, he's so deceptive in his own words that he says, Yes, Isaiah, I showed them everything. Everything I have. Everything that, that is my treasure. Everything in my palace. This morning I want to ask all of us is, 
is where is your treasure? Where is your real treasure? Jesus, in one of his sermons, he, he was speaking and he says this. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, okay? Where moths and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures where? In heaven, where moths and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. And he says, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Where is your treasure? What is your treasure? What is the stuff that you have in your life that could be maybe separating you from the relationship that God wants to have with you? What is those treasures? Where is your heart? What is the stuff that you live for daily that has your heart's attention focus constantly? There's a saying that goes like this. Oh no, it's not there. Is it all the way back, maybe? Thanks, Damien. Something, yes, spot on. The more things you own, the more they own you. I thought a bit about this, and I thought long and hard about this quote, okay? The more things you own, the more they own you. Think about that. Think about your stuff that you have in your life. Think about if, if something maybe goes wrong with something, or think about your chocolate. Think how, how you, you know, hold on to your chocolate with maybe both hands. The more stuff you have, the more they own you. So we're doing this whole series about spring cleaning. And I guess if, if there is anything that is separating us from a relationship with God, or like in Hezekiah's case, where we would give more glory to our possessions and the stuff that we have than actually communicate with other people what God is actually doing in our life, then I want to encourage us to actually spring clean and clear out. Get that stuff so far out of your house. Get rid of it. Because that means, hey, your treasure is on stuff that actually one day is going to be taken away. There'll be nothing left. The prophecy that Isaiah then gave to Hezekiah came true and Hezekiah's stuff eventually all faded away. Today we live in a world where we are guaranteed probably that we're all going to die. Don't know if you knew that or if you didn't, but we're all going to die at some stage. What are you living for? Who do you want to become? When you look at your possessions, what does that stuff mean to you? Are you living a life where your heart is actually so fixed on treasures that are stored up in heaven? Paul was writing in Acts and, and he says this, In everything I did, I showed you that by this kind of hard work, we must help the weak. Remembering the words the Lord Jesus himself said, Jesus saying, hey, it is more blessed to give than to receive. It is more blessed to give than to receive. I would be, be curious to, to actually see, is there anyone, I mean, if you're a Christian or not a Christian, who wouldn't agree that it is really more blessed to give than to receive? There's something that happens inside of us. There's something that changes our heart when actually we, we say, hey, you know what, it's, instead of just grabbing all this chocolate for myself, I'm, I'm actually going to release it and, and, and give it to someone. And especially in this context where Paul says, hey, this kind of hard work we must use to help the weak. Isn't it awesome when we actually, we, we change, I guess, the direction we're living our life and we say, hey, 
who do I want to become? Do I want to become someone who just stores up all these possessions for myself and one day actually they're all going to rot and fade away? Or could I rather live my life that would make a difference in other people's lives for eternity? It is more blessed to give than to receive. You know, this morning I got an email, and um, I want to share this email with you. I don't have all the words or whatever, but it was an email from Fiji. Um, literally, as I was doing these slides, we got this email in. And for those who don't know, this here um, was during July. There was a team of us um, from Grayscape that went over to Fiji to help um, a school and to help build two classrooms. Um, we didn't complete those classrooms. Um, we only got sort of two, I think we built two and we were on the third, but we didn't put the roofing on or anything. But the guys in Fiji said, hey, they're going to continue to work on them. And um, yeah, they were so, so blessed by us going there. Um, they constantly would tell us, you know, it's been such a blessing for you guys to be here. But similarly, you heard as many people sat on the stage and said, man, that trip moved my life. That trip did something to me. It was so good to go and serve and to give. It is much better to actually give than to receive. So this morning they sent some pictures. And um, so this is, yeah, as you can see, these were the classrooms, the one and the two. And that was the third one that we started on. And um, this is the whole roofing going on now. And um, I think there's one more there you can have a better glimpse of the, the roofing. But man, when I, when I think about this, I'm like, man, it is so much better to give than to receive. Um, like we look at this as, as just a building, but we know the, I guess, the legacy that this building can leave on the children who are going to get educated um, there in Fiji. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Yesterday, as we hosted the, the Global Leadership um, Summit here, I was so inspired to see our church family again just serving wholeheartedly. Like there was heaps of people here, and constantly our toilets were being cleaned, people were welcoming, the carpets were being, you know, cleaned up. Um, you know, there were people selling books. The, the guys were on the back desk the whole day. There was so much happening. And, you know, it's just, it is better to give than to receive. I'm encouraged that we're a church that, that sees so much value in actually serving. And, and so many people said yesterday, man, what an awesome day. Your team's awesome. What a great experience to see people just serving. I loved it. People took work off yesterday and said, hey, we just want to come and serve. We want to give up our chocolate, and we just want to come and serve. Amazing. Can we give a hand just for all those people who served yesterday? Now, do you guys agree with me that, that it is more blessed to give than to receive? Yeah? Is there anyone who would say no? Probably too scared to put the hand up. Good, good. But I strongly believe this, and I strongly believe this when, when it comes to our possessions as well. Not only our time. I mean, we can, see, we, we can serve long with our time, and um, it is such a blessing as we invest in people's lives. But also, um, when it comes to our possessions, um, if we go to the, the next slide, in Proverbs, it says, the world of the generous gets larger and larger. The world of the stingy gets smaller and smaller. You know, I think that the whole Bible, if, if we have to put it, the whole theme of the Bible, the whole theme of Jesus' narrative is actually just about giving. It's about giving, giving, giving. And I think one of the things that God challenges us with when it comes to, I guess, spring cleaning is also thinking, hey, who do I want to become when it comes to generosity? 
I can choose how generous I want to be. I can choose how much time I want to give. I can choose how much finances I want to give. Yeah, the word says, hey, the world of the generous gets larger and larger. As we continue to give either of our time or of our finances or of our possessions that are just separating us from our relationship sometimes with God, our world gets larger and larger. Next one, Damien. Thanks. So this is what I want to do, all right? Action steps. That's pretty much it for today, all right? Action steps. The question, who do I want to become? These are the action steps I want to give today. First up is to clear out, all right? Clear out. If there is stuff in your life that seriously you're living for and it has no long-term value, clear it out. Get rid of it. If it is making you trip over stuff, instead of grow your relationship with Jesus Christ, get rid of it. Give it away. Help others. The next one is choose. This week as you spend maybe 15 minutes, as you, as you grab your spot and as you spend time just reading or being quiet and connecting with God, I want you to ask yourself this question. How generous do you want to be? How generous do you want to be? Because generosity is basically a choice. It's our choice that we can make. How generous do I want to be? And then the last one is the, is the challenge. And I want to give you guys this challenge. And it's the challenge of test tithing. Okay? Have, has anyone ever heard of tithing? All right? A few people. Now, tithing is um, a biblical guideline and, and principle that encourages that people who are fully devoted followers of Jesus and who are committed to God will actually say, hey, you know, all my chocolate that I get, all my income that I get every week or fortnight, I'm going to give a tithe, a 10% of that to God's work. It's God's money, like He gives us everything, but that 10% there... I'm going to give and I'm going to make, an, a, I guess, an action step by saying, hey, God, I'm trusting you with my finances and I'm going to give you this 10%, all right? It was something that was practiced way back in the Bible and still Jesus also spoke about it in the New Testament. And as I sit here on stage, I want to share with you um, my conviction on it because when I became a Christian, when I became a fully devoted follower of Jesus, I mean, to give 10% of what you're receiving sounds pretty outrageous, right? It sounds irrational. It's like, why would I do that? Why would I give like 10% to the church or, or, or to God's work? Why would I do that? It, it's, it, it's a hard thing to do. And I mean, like, if you have $300, if you make $300 a week, you give $30, okay? But if you make $500, then you have to give $50. Or if you make $1,000, then you have to give $100. And it just keeps adding up. So you're like, man, dude, this, you know, I could use that money for something else. It's irrational. But I think that's what God encourages us to do when it comes to following Jesus. Because I think God actually wants us to say, hey, Wesley, I want you to trust me more than you trust in your finances, more than you trust in your possessions. I want you to do something that is almost irrational, that is actually stupid, but actually saying, hey, I'm trusting you, God, with this 10%. I know it's going to make things really tight, you know, and I don't know how I'm going to make the rest of the week or the month, but I'm going to trust you with this 10%. And I've been doing that since I've been a Christian, all right? Since I've been a fully devoted follower of Jesus, every time I get an income, I give 10% to the church. And that's just my conviction, all right? I, I, I believe that, hey, you know, I don't know, 
I know God's not going to, you know, cut my hands off or do anything bad to me if I don't do it. But I do believe that there is something that it is more blessed to give than to receive. So even when, when I get my, my paycheck fortnightly, I actively, you know, I could put like a, um, what do you call it, like an automatic payment on my bank account that just sends the, the 10%, you know, each week. But I actively make a commitment that I do it personally because I believe it's me making an action step by saying, hey, I'm paying this tithe over to the church because I believe I am putting my full trust in you, God, even when it comes to my possessions. I want to challenge you. The, the word speaks about this in Malachi. And actually it, it says, hey, bring a tithe into the storehouse, all right, and, and God actually says there, he says the word, test me in this. Test me. Check it out. So as an action step this week, as, we, as we're doing spring cleaning, I want to encourage um, you, if you are a follower of Jesus, or, or if you find that Grace Gate is your home, that, that you would just practice this principle and test it out. I even spoke with the team and I said, man, shouldn't we do a... Uh, a tithing challenge, and we say, hey, for like three months, we, will, we want you guys to tithe, and we will actually give you your money back after three months if you are not satisfied with what God can bless you and promise you with, all right? And I'm not saying, um, like, there is also a big thing called the prosperity gospel where we say, hey, if we're giving, if we're giving, if we're giving, God is going to bless us. God is going to bless us. God is going to bless us. And I can tell you from my personal experience that that isn't the case because sometimes I've gone without and sometimes I've been challenged and I've been like not blessed, all right? Sometimes it's even a harder season when we give. But I believe that this commitment is saying, hey, God, I trust you in all areas of my life. And especially when it comes to my possessions and finances, I want to trust you with this, and I want to see, I want to test you, and I want to see that, hey, you can take care of me. So my challenge to you um, is, number one, clear out. If there are possessions that are separating you from, from your relationship with God, clear them out. Number two, um, I want you to make a choice, right? Make a choice. Who do I want to become? How generous do I want to be? Um, you know, maybe make, make an account where you can store up a generosity account that this, this is a certain amount of money that I'm going to commit to actually giving out. Maybe it's today you're going to take that action step by grabbing one of those boxes and saying, hey, what is $9 and a few extra goodies for a child that can make an eternal difference in their life? And the last one is I want to challenge all of us to just test tithing out. Just test it out. To see, hey, God, man, this is difficult, but hey, I want to entrust you with this. Because I can also guarantee you, the church doesn't want your money. But I know that God wants something so much more for your life than you can even see now. I can tell you, every cent that, that, that comes in is an awesome opportunity that can be used even in a greater way to make a difference. But hey, test it out. Check it out. I want to end off with this, this word, and it's John 3, verse 16. We all know this verse, um, but I think this sums up the spring cleaning possessions and, I guess, clearing out, where it says, For God so loved the world that He did what? He gave, all right? I like to see that, that, that the whole verb, of the Bible narrative is actually giving. It's giving it, because it is more blessed to give than to receive. For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son that whoever believes in Him shall not perish but have eternal life. God sets this perfect example for us by sparing His one and only Son. How much value did God see in us that he would spare his one and only son to die for us, to clean us up, to give us a, a better chance 
to give us eternal life and a hope and a future. Where's your heart at? Because the word that we read today was, wherever your treasure is, that's where your heart is at. This is a blessing. This is a free gift. It's something we can receive, but also this can inspire us. This can change us. This can help us to live a life of giving. A life of giving our time. A life of giving our our possessions. The life of giving our love to people who are weak, who are less fortunate, who need something else in their life.